as you see the gun there, we're about 50, or the clock, 15 seconds from the gun. And, and then the start is going to look like, it's going to look like they just announced Taylor Swift tickets were available. <laughs> and people are just charging to the box office. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's not the best analogy when they come through here, but. And they are off. The men's 2023 NCAA Cross Country Championships. The view from the sky is beautiful as these athletes are taking out this race quite quick because it is a downhill start as they're chasing that gator up front. We already saw a few athletes go down. That's why you have to get out at this stretch. There's so many athletes, 255 on the line, and you have to get out, like you said, downhill for the first K, but then the hills attack. Ed Eystone said one of the first objectives is stay on your feet. Yes. Right? We kind of take that for granted. Oh, we just, we, we run. But that's, you got to be upright and not get bounced around from there. Good spot there. You can get a look at NAU. Good look at the Arkansas team. They feel really confident in what they can do. Um, out of Fayetteville, they haven't won quite some time. They've been off the, they had a couple of podium finishes. I think their last one was in the 2020 meet that was in 21 at Stillwater and all those guys. Listen, I always say there's three ways you can win a race. You can outrun somebody, you can outsmart somebody, you can outlast somebody. I feel good that, that Graham Blank said, how are you going to win? He goes, the smartest guy is going to win. Yeah. The smartest guy is going to Look at that massive, folks. That's and, great. And we have seen NAU take it out plenty of times before. Gas, gas, gas is what they say. And Nico Young and Drew Bosley did it last year, and they're not scared to do it I again. Mean, Nico Young, it looks like he is in full sprint right now. He's going so hard, and Drew Bosley is in the lead there. And that's what they did last year. They took it out hard, mm -hmm. and it worked. They went two and three. All coaches talk about running fearless as we go through the list of all 21 teams that are here. And listen, we keep saying OSU and NAU, right? That's the one that looks like it's going to be. But always in here, somebody mucks that up, right? <laughs> somebody runs really well or somebody doesn't quite run like they're supposed to. So that's how it's supposed to go right now. And then it never does. That's the name of the game. We do see many of the big players there at the front exactly as we would hope not getting stuck in the back like parker valby did that first 400 they are there and that we just saw kai robinson on the screen i gotta say he looked like he was jogging well and he is such a guy that can run from the front and also sit and kick and he said to me i asked him what way are you gonna run he said i can run either way i feel really good i've timed my peak at the right moment and that's what it's all about but you know putting it together is one thing so we'll have to see this first 1K is so fast. John, you ready? We're about to see this populate <laughs> on the screen. Yeah. This is unbelievable. They are out in 229. Woo! That's sub four mile pace, John. What do you think about that? I don't, well, I don't think it will hold. Uh, Drew Bosley currently technically has the is number one. He's a guy that came here. They've had two really big meets before here. Uh, the UVA College uh, Challenge was eight weeks ago. Drew Bosley won that one. Then they had pre-nats five weeks ago, and that was won by Ben Shear and a bit of a shocker from Arkansas. He saw a couple of good hogs up there in front, Patrick Kiprop and yep. Karami Yego. Uh, Kiprop's been there. Yego was a transfer who was 37th last year for South Alabama. And then Nico Young, who he entertained the idea that, that he said this might be my last cross country race at NAU and I love cross country more than any track race. Well, listen to this. He was a runner up in 2023. He's 11th as a sophomore, fourth as a true freshman. I mean, he is such a stud on the grass. He's so good on the track as well. But this is really, I think, something that's been eating at him. He wants to break that tape. And I know that Mike Smith wants that individual win, too. The cross country course does not owe you anything, but Nico Young is due for a win yeah. here. This might be the year that he finally comes out and does it. No one here is more familiar what it's like to be at the front of this race than Nico Young. None of these men have won an NCAA cross title before. We're going to get a new one in just the next 25 minutes. <laughs> and I realize they're packed up right now, but I just, uh, Leo Young's in 78th at Stanford. Lex is one to like, I feel like you got to at least finish in front of your two <laughs> brothers, right? If you don't finish in front of your twin brothers who are freshmen, then, then perhaps you shouldn't, you know. You, there's so much shame at Thanksgiving. They're pretty good. It's starting to slow down a little bit. I think they might have seen 229 on the clock and got a little bit spooked. You know, it lulls you into a false sense of security. But I do think in the men's race, it is a little bit more packed. You know, we knew on the women's race, there would maybe be a couple different packs, which we saw. This race, like last year, they were all in it. And even though we did have, you know, some of the big dogs up front. I don't think that you can bet on this race necessarily, but the, the odds makers would have had a field day with it, as there's probably 
seven guys oh. that have a very legitimate shot of being able to win this thing. So many. And one of those, again, that we had talked to previously before the race, Hoptum Samuel, yeah. uh, you know, not necessarily a familiar face. He's a freshman uh, right. in from Eritrea. He's run 27, 20 for 10,000 meters, 17th at World Cross. And he has been incredibly, incredibly impressive. Him and Nico Young to the line at the regional meet just a week ago. And, you know, Hampton, even though you said he was 17th at World Cross, he was 18 seconds in that race in front of Kai Robinson, who is, you know, is definitely one of the favorites in this race. We did see Graham Blanks up there as well. I mean, all the all the big dogs are up there right now. Terry, how do you think a race like this works in favor of for middle distance runners, guys? I just saw Liam Murphy on yep. the screen. Yep. Uh, you know, we, we've got some great Wisconsin runners like Adam Spencer, who's going to need to step up for uh, the the Badgers if they're going to have a chance on the podium. What is it like for a middle distance runner? Well, here? I think that you need to be able to understand that we have a lot of guys that are running 1,500 miles, but then they eventually move up. This is sort of their first shot at seeing what they can do over the long distance. But going from 8K in the regular season to then 10K at regionals and then 10K at nationals, it's a big jump. They are training for the 10K all year long. But yeah, that's always a question. Can the 1,500 meter guys handle 6.2? Go through 2K at 528, so that's in you know, 2730, and then you put some fatigue in there. You 28 minutes, 20, uh, which is still pretty brisk, uh, right? There's nothing easier than that first K. It feels great. You're all happy. This is the race you've been waiting for, and then you look like you said you're looking to go wait. Maybe that is a little, a little too sporty. And now you are here. <laughs> so NAU leading at 2K, 91 points. Arkansas, 95. They've they've fallen back a little bit. John, Arkansas. What do they have to do? What's their keys to success in order to pull out that finish today? Yeah, they've really, they hammered that first uh, that first couple of K. Listen, I think their top three guys are pretty well set. Uh, Patrick Kiprop has shown that he's on occasion faded, but I think he's shown that he's uh, really strong. Karami Yego's a motivated guy. Ben Shearer has backed up his performance here at um, at Prenas with a, a good finish at both the regional and at the conference meet. So then it comes down to guys like can uh, Ruben Reyna come through? Can Jacob McLeod, who got a season back, they weren't counting on him. He's in that race. Uh, Elias Schrimmel, now you're racing on a, you're relying on a 1500 meter guy. So they have huge upset, uh, upside, but some of those guys then are question marks over 10K. We've got a surge on the screen. We're waiting to see who's the one making that push up front. But things are starting to open up here as they're getting towards that 3K. It looks like Drew Bosley and is that Kiprop, who yeah, Kiprop is starting to make the push, saying, let's get going here. But it wasn't enough to shake any of the players. Everyone is settling right back in. And once again, Kai Robinson looks like he's jogging. And there's a chance that Patrick Kiprop's just on a sugar high. Uh, I don't know if you saw, they put a little thing. He, he likes his tea, and he likes a little milk, and then he puts eight packets of sugar in it. Oh, yeah, okay. so he may be, you know, listen, and that's fine, as long as you can make it through 10K. If you want to have the sugar crash this afternoon at 1 o'clock watching the football game, that's all good and well. I don't think that's a sugar high. I think that's all <laughs> talent. But you do see some of the big names that we've talked about kind of sitting back in the pack, and I like that. Graham, Graham Blanks, we saw him at Nutty just sit, 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 and unleash this powerful kick over 400 meters. You know, he was second in the 5K outdoors, sixth in the 10K. We know he can handle the 10K distance. He's got the confidence now. He said he took his time getting into this sport. There's no pressure. There's some pressure now. Looking at NAU's guys, you know, you have the, the, the one-two punch in Nico and Drew. But in 19th place right now is Aaron Les Harris. He is the transfer from Wake Forest. He is one of those key additions in the offseason that is able to come in and immediately make an impact. He's actually now moved up as they come through 3K. Northern Arizona is down to 85 points. Oklahoma State has moved up big time, though, dropping 46 points and are now in second with 103. Victor Shitsama is going to be the key to it all as he's slowly moving up and is currently their fifth man in 53rd place. Chance for him to be a... All-American for a fourth time, which is, that's, boy, that is saying something. Uh, when they went by that 2K, you, know, you saw Alex Mayer was somewhere in the 50s, and you know that wasn't going to hold. And you look at the, there, you see the two teams side by side, that comparison of where they are, Kip and Gedich and, and Musau, really strong. Alex Mayer picked up 15 over the last K. Faoud Masadi, 3,000-meter champ indoor, also was on their DMRT that won a national championship. And then the usual suspects, Prosser and Quacks. And, and so you don't want to be hyper-focused here, but that's kind of where it is because I think, Kyle, when you look at these two teams here, 
If they run 85%, they're probably better than all the rest of the teams at 100%. It's a top-heavy field. Look, we want to give everyone a shot here, but in reality, this is a rematch between NAU and Oklahoma State. The way that they're doing it is two very different ways. Oklahoma State, they reloaded, and we see those guys right now in Dennis Kip Negetich, Kip and and Kip. Kip and Getich, sorry, and Brian Massau, whereas NAU is relying on Santiago Prosser and Brody Hasty to do exactly what they always do, to just slowly move up into the field, get in that All-American uh, position, and just pull it out once again. If they've done it four times, they can do it five. And as they went through 3K, Kai Robinson sitting there in eighth, Parker Wolf in ninth, uh, Graham Blanks is in tenth. So that's one, that's good company you're keeping yourself in, right, Kerry? And now you kind of know where all your guys are. So you if you figure if I'm with those guys, I'm okay. You got to know where your guys are. And with, even with Oklahoma State, we talk a lot about the dynasty at NAU. Well, Oklahoma State, they have a number of uh, national championships as well. And when you walk through your Hall of Fame or you see your Hall of Fame, whatever it is, you know what's on your chest and you can bet that Oklahoma State is wanting to run for another title, and they're doing that just now. And they had a little stretch in 2009, 2010. They won the championship back-to-back, -back, yep. and then in 2012 was their last championship. And, and Dave Smith had said, you know, we got third one year, and I'm like, ah, this trophy. And he goes, 10 years later, I'm like, wow, I should not have had that arrogance as a young coach. Like, every one of those podium finishes is actually special. So special. So it's still early in the race. I just want to remind everyone, between first and 45th right now is still five seconds. Wow. Like, that is nothing. You can reach out and basically touch those guys. You do have to navigate through some of the field. And the big thing is for those guys who did go out a little bit more conservatively and starting to move up, don't get caught in the pace of those guys that you're trying to pass. Blow by them. Go find your guys up front. It's always a little different for me thinking about, I had, when I won my individual championship, I came with another athlete, with Carmen Duma, one of my best friends. Then we came as a team and won together, and it's just different, right? When you come individually and you're up in the front here, you're not worrying about where your teammates are, but when you have all of the guys depending on you, that's a big lift. Has anybody noticed that through 4K they're tied? Come on! <laughs> it took 83 points last year. <laughs> right now they're at that 86 each. It, it, it cannot possibly happen again. It would be too good of TV, John. Uh. What, do you want me to do the tiebreaker right now? Because then the tiebreaker, guess who wins again? Uh -oh. Northern Arizona. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll let it. We're going to need the next 6K for this to, to come through. There's our, our first look at uh, Samuel from... Uh, hip Tom Samuel from New Mexico up there in, in the front. It, in Oklahoma State right now, Victor Shitsama, the guy who is like, should we put him in? He was overtrained. He has been running that well this season, but he's always about 30th place. Well, he's in 29th, and he just passed 24 guys in that last K. But right now, Drew Bosley is the one who's continuing to lead it up front. I know this is superficial, and that's, but that's just who I am. Uh, if Bosley had the mustache that he had going in indoor, I'd take him, and I'd take him to run away from this field. You just saw the OSU guys, three of them, three, four, five, all packed up, looking around, Woo. looking at each other. Alex Mayer leading the way. He's the, he's really the leader of the team. And I heard him yesterday. The guys were doing a stride. They came through the finish. And he turned to them and said, "This is our type of course." Look how smooth Drew Bosley looks up front there. He just dictates the race every single year it seems. He looks so good. Nico Young always has a little bit of a scrim, uh, uh, you know, face that looks like he's hurting a little bit, but I don't think he is. But again, we have some of those guys that are in there that are more for the individual win maybe this year just chilling look the best thing you can do to help your team is get one point yeah and that's what drew bosley is trying to do but look we we coach dave smith was saying the the, the new guys they can be a little bit inconsistent mm -hmm. what are we going to get out of them at this point as we approach 5k they are still there and they look very very comfortable i guess something to note dennis he was actually quite accomplished. He was third at the Kenyan Trials. Like, Dave knew that he was getting a stud. Brian, he didn't know what he was getting. He yeah. took someone's word on it, took a bet. He came in, and he immediately adjusted after just a few weeks on campus and has been looking really smooth. They say he's a little bit more of a middle distance runner. Well, he's making it look easy right now. Well, we're right at the middle distance of this race as we come up on the 5K mark, which is halfway. And we are really starting to spread out, though, and, uh, you know, top... 10 to 12 guys letting it be known that they're the, the ones who are contenders to actually come out and win the race. The rest of the guys laying off the gas a little bit. You see Fraud there with Alex Mayer. Those you guys just do exactly what we got to do, get in that top 20, 
spot and get the team title. We saw Hilly, Hillary Chariot back there in that second pack. Samuel, Masao, Bosley, Kip and Geddes. There's Graham Blanks has got himself up in there as you would expect. Patrick Kiprop, Nico Young right there. Patrick Wolf, Kai Robinson, Karami Yego. At this point right now, right, that just looks to me like, okay, that's, um, those are just guys out right now. That's a tie for first as far as you have it. Uh, Oklahoma State, good K as they have charged out in front of Northern Arizona, and uh, the tie temporarily is broken and has gone the Cowboy way. Oklahoma State now has five guys in the top 19. That is how you win a national championship right there, and they continue to move up. Look, it's only 5,000 meters in. I know, that's my scare, right? Like, I'm a little nervous that Oklahoma State has all their guys up there. We did say four could be in the top 10. Well, five could be in the top 10, but I do think that you have to hold on and you have to also keep something in the tank for these hills with 5,000 meters still to go. If I'm OSU right there in the front, I'm just saying, we got it, let's just keep this going. But if you're NAU, I think that you gotta, you gotta make an, a, a real string out type of move to hope that your guys in the back, those four or five guys, have an opportunity to weave through the field. You wanna create havoc behind you. You want them to pick up that carnage. So it'll be interesting to know if Coach Smith can see Drew or Nico out there and say, let's get this thing going. This is the hardest thing about being on a team is when you are number three, four, and five. Obviously, that's where all the points come, right? But you have got to stay in it. You've got to look for your guys. you got to look for your team, and you have to just chase them. I mean, that's the big thing. Hang on right here for the next 2, 3K, and then kick her down. Easier said than done. Yeah. <laughs> if, if you can hold 54 points, the rest of those boys can go to the cabin. If you're wondering, Oklahoma State in their previous, in 09, they won with 127. The following year, they won with 73. In their last championship, they won with 72. So, um, yeah, 54 is spicy right now Northern the Cowboys. Ar Northern Arizona does have seven guys. I will say that. So in sixth and seventh, you have Brody Hasty, who's sitting there, 46 in the team score. He's done this before. He's sitting waiting. He knows exactly how long 10K is. And if he can come back and close down, finish in that top 30, then all of a sudden that gap between Oklahoma State and Northern Arizona completely disappears. Know yeah. your role. Know your role. You have to do that. You have to be confident enough to not go out into this exciting atmosphere and run above your head. You have to stick with the race plan. The one thing you can bet for NAU is they're not going to get panic. They're not going to get, you know, they're not going to get skittish. Last year they were they were not winning at 9,000 meters. They, I'm not sure they were winning at 9,500 meters, but they were when they finally got across the line. But John, one of the hardest things to do as a runner is to be to have to think during a race. A lot of times, if you can turn your brain off and just run, that makes for an easier race. These guys that are in the back of the pack, trying to keep you know that distance close with their teammates, they're thinking, they're strategizing. They're not just thinking about going for the win. They got to figure all these things out, and that mentally gets tiring. Oklahoma State just is continuing to, to keep it exactly where they were. They've got 53 points, but now Victor Shitsama is their fifth man. He's in 16th Woo. place overall. Absolutely incredible performance by them. NAU is improving, though. They've moved up a few spots, and he also, their 6'7 guys continue to move up. So now the gap between them, not as big as it once was, just 22 points. And BYU, Ranked third coming in, exactly where they are, uh, where we thought they would be, Iowa State. And Arkansas having very good days right now. Right there, you see on the right-hand side of the screen, the Alabama uniform, that's Victor Kiprop, who uh, Dan Waters, his coach, says, and I've seen it, like, if he's there in the last 1,000, he's really strong, and he can really, really go. Oh, man, though, looking at Kai Robinson and Graham Blanks as they go by, those two not really thinking so much about what's going on behind them, just looking at what they had to do to sit and kick. That's what's worked for them in the past, and it seems as if that's what they're doing now. I think Kai is a guy who will be willing to wait as long as possible. Again, he looks like he's jogging. They do. But, but that's what he did on the uh, out, outdoor season. You know, yeah. he was able to wait and wait and really put the blast on the last 400 meters. Different conditions there, though, right? Super humid, super slow races, but he says he's super fit and he knows how to run this race. One of our top returners. I think Graham Blanks has to make it hurt at the hardest part of the race. I, I think, think he will. He's a true cross guy. He was meant for this. He's coming in on a little bit fresher legs than some of those other guys. He hasn't had to run too hard since Nutty Comb. Yep. I think once it, everyone wants to settle and collect themselves a little bit, that's when Graham needs to attack. He saw as they round that turn, Ben Shear, who won here at pre-Nats, he's back in 67th place, so probably not what the Hogs expected for him. 
as as he went by. We saw Ben Shear at SECs. It almost seems like that middle of the season for him was where it was at. You know, he's still running a good race today, but he really seemed as if he peaked a little early. So, Oklahoma State. Starting to push. Five guys in the top 15, and uh, right now you got Musau, who came across 6,000, 17-18, so the gap is 17-18 to our last guy. Four seconds. Four second gap between your five guys. You know who's not hesitating to go with that move at all? Graham Blanks. No. But Oklahoma State, those guys take so much confidence looking over your shoulder, and you can immediately count, all right, two, three, four, five. Here we go. You're right, Nico Young, he looks tired from the first few steps. Yeah, he just looks a little bit uncomfortable. He always kind of has that, you know, that look where he's real focused, but doesn't look like he's ever gotten into real good stride here. But yeah, look who answered the call right there, Graham Blanks. You know, he's such a fun guy to listen to. If you ever have a chance to listen to any podcast he's on, he's a great guy to listen to. He's a, you know, philosophy mind major, I believe. He's an economics guy or engineering. He's, you know, he's very brilliant. So he's a brilliant guy, but he knows how to run. Kyle, save me going through all the media notes. Uh, how often, when was the last Ivy League champ in this race? It's a sore subject, John, but we've uh -oh. never had one. But never. today might that be would the be day. It would be amazing if he comes through. There's Kai Robinson. I asked Graham yesterday, who's going to win this race? The toughest athlete or the fittest athlete? He said the smartest. Yeah, he did. And as you know, if you're from, if you're up there in Cambridge, you're wicked smart. <laughs> Well, his coach, Coach Gibby, he said has taught him how to race in front, but also how to race from the back. He's gotten so much confidence. He loves his team. Shout out to Acer, Acer Iverson, who's been there with him, kind of led him through. They have this huge slushy machine that they're all excited to get home to. They have a really great camaraderie. But look at, yep, they are starting to spread out. They're, they're seven wide. Yep. <laughs> they're using every part of this cross country course. And Kai Robinson now starting to you know, he, did, he didn't immediately respond to that move. It was very tempered, uh, you know, closing of the gap. And it's almost like he's accidentally finding himself in the front now. It, it, he, he's continuing to look so comfortable. And it's just, if you feel good, you might all of a sudden find yourself in the front. But uh, again, if I'm him, do you want to wait a little bit when that's how you've beaten these guys so many times before? But if he feels good, he feels good, so maybe let's go. Really good look at Graham Blanks, how he just let that hill carry him down, and it carried him halfway up the next one, right? Really use that momentum all the way in there and then work those arms as they come through. And that that last little stretch of that downhill uphill has thin, thinned the herd a little bit. And look at the way Oklahoma State has moved up through the last few K. They're down to 43 points. We said beforehand, look, this is a team that might have four guys with top 10 possibilities. And right now their fifth guy is in 16th place. So they are all there and they're working together to move up in the field. You can see the hurt on some of these athletes, but Kai Robinson and Graham Brook, Graham, Sorry, he all he those two look so good, look so composed, almost that like they're working together. As they come through 8K, it is Kai Robinson and Graham Blanks with Hafton Samuel just sitting back just a second behind. But at this point, it's really just a few guys in it. I believe that was Dennis from Oklahoma State as well. They're they're fully pulling away from the pack now. I think these are our four contenders with less than two kilometers to go. And I know we were saying beforehand this is a really hard course, but they just came through 8K and 22.53 looking quite easy. Well, it is hard. I mean, we talked about that. They haven't seen a lot of rain here. They were, they're needing it, but the course is hard. It's fast, and they're looking good. Oklahoma State now 51 points. Just the difference of a couple guys in either direction can make all the difference here as we're waiting for Northern Arizona's fifth man to cross the AK mark, get an idea of exactly where they're at. But right now it is all Oklahoma State and they've got individual title hopes and team title on the line right now. Take a look at that drone shot. You can see the lead vehicle, right, that's out front taking pictures of all those guys. They come to them. The man driving that is undefeated. It's Steve Murray, the owner of this property, co-owner of Panorama Farms. Been such a good host while we've been here the last couple of days and really all that's taken in the days and the months leading up to this championship. So uh, nice piece of property here by Steve. And then he's out there just doing damage on his property, making sure those guys know where they're going here over those last couple of K. 
and it's less than one mile left. We've got four guys in it together as all the fans, the sold out crowd run across the field and they're lining up. They've got their cameras out and they're ready to go see who's gonna emerge as they do this final loop. It is very much an uphill final 400. If you are one of these guys and you're feeling good right now, do you wait? Do you wanna have your confidence that you've been doing your hill repeats or do you say, let's start making it hurt now. I feel good, I believe in my fitness. I've done my double threshold days. Let's get this done. I definitely think that. I mean, this is what we're seeing here right now with Hampton Samuel. He is the guy that has the fastest 10K on paper. He's a 27-20 guy. He's very, very good. You said it, he was 17th at the World Cross in 2023 against the pros. Not not juniors against the pros. He's been around for a long time, world junior bronze medalist, and he's the one dictating this K right here. Can he dictate the rest of the race? We'll have to see. Those top two spots is where the fight is, but the podium, the rest of the podium, BYU, Arkansas, North Carolina, Iowa State, Texas, even Air Force, Stanford, all in that fight, Wisconsin. Have to be a little disappointed. Top guy right now is 35th. Thought we'd see better from the Badgers and have not. Haptum Samuels taking a look back. He's seeing if this move is doing any damage. And Graham Blanks is completely unfazed by everything that he's throwing at him right now as they are starting to pull away from Kevin Gedich and Kai Robinson. Is this now a two-man race with 9,000 meters to go? What I've liked about Graham Blanks is he says you have to believe in yourself, and we know that as athletes, but I really believe that's what he has now. He believes in himself. He knows his coach does, his team does, his family, but he now is believing in the training. He's believing in his race tactics, and we're seeing that time and time again with him. Undefeated coming here today. Can he hold it up? He said as an econ major, it's going to benefit him because he's going to do some cost-benefit analysis, and right now with <laughs> one kilometer yes. go, do I go we've got four seconds back to third place do I go do I go or do I wait and this is a game of chess unfolding right in front of us on our screens you're getting a feel is the guy next to me holding on for dear life or is he waiting to go who's gonna show their cards first Samuel looks good his face looks good there's a little grimace on Blank's face both legs look good their arms are there but look at now there's the move push. Graham Blanks just made a move into the lead. He felt a moment of weakness and have Tim Samuel, and he's saying it's time to go. There's about 700 meters left in the race, but there's also a big hill between him and the finish line. This is a big downhill, Kyle. This is the one where we said you gotta make this move right here. If you wanna get any distance on the athletes, go now on this downhill with about 800 meters to go. He hasn't broken them yet. When you go, you gotta go here. He's made his move. He's gotta commit to it. As yeah. they round the turn, they can hear the crowd and they see him. They're going wild. The finish line is in sight. And Samuel, yeah, Samuel didn't shake. He's covered, but he's still, he's, he's putting just, you know, a valuable meter or two with every fourth or fifth stride. And as we look at the team score, 26 between Oklahoma State at 52 and Northern Arizona at 78. They have to just hold on here. It's unfolding. They do not want to go to the tiebreaker once again. It's, it's been a painful year for them, and they've got their opportunity for revenge. Well, Oklahoma State and Northern Arizona have shown that they are every bit the class we thought they were. There's Kai Robinson, the 5 and 10K champ outdoor. He's probably, uh, he, he's not going to be here. He's going to be an All-American. He's going to be a top 10 guy, but he's not going to be a top one or two guy, and that's what we're looking at right now. Who will be the top one? Look at Graham Blanks just going for it. He's striding out, letting this downhill take him right before this turn. He's going to have to climb on his way back. He's absolutely flying around that corner as he comes around. He's going to be able to see the finish line. He's not looking back, though. He's only looking forward. He's putting his head down, pumping the arms. He sees it. He sees an opportunity, but Haptum Samuel is not quitting. There's still a few hundred meters left as Graham Blanks is going to the knees and he's driving. Does Harvard finally pull this off? By the way, Harvard-Princeton, there's a good battle as well for the top Ivy school. The two of them are here head to head, but it is now pulled over and is clear for Graham Blanks. Graham Blanks, he was six here last year. He was the Nutty Comb champion. He's taking a look back. He sees ah! it. Waving to the crowd, putting the number one up. Graham Blanks, there it is, the very first Ivy champ getting the laurels here at the 23 Cross Country Championship in Virginia. Graham Blanks, the low stick and the national champ. The freshman Haptu Samuel is behind him. Kai Robinson, a great run for Stanford. He'll come home third for the Cardinal. And the first of what appears to be the national champions, Oklahoma State, Arizona Bosley, Nico Young.
And we see Oklahoma State, they're getting their second runner Whoa. across the oh. line. There's third, there's four. There's fifth. <laughs> and six. Al Alex Mayer is going to be, Alex Mayer's not going to score for this team. Oklahoma State putting on an absolute clinic wow. today. They tied last year. They went back. They reloaded. They said, we're not going to make that same mistake again and let this come down to a rule book. We are the national champions at just 52 points. Oklahoma State takes it, the 2023 NCAA Cross Country Champions. Right now I have it 49, 4, 8, 10, 12, and 15. Yes. Your math is better than mine, John. 49 is right. <laughs> Public education, big school, Missouri. Uh -oh. Good math class. Boom. <laughs> 49 to 71, Oklahoma State, as we're waiting to see, can Arkansas and North Carolina round out their top five and get on the podium? Kip and Gedich, Masao, Masaudi, Shitsama, Alex Mayer. Good, Alex did score. I'm like, what are you doing? You know, there was some question to Alex Mayer at the national, at the regional, because he was kind of slow, and he said to Coach Jason, "I'm the only guy doing what you told me to do, which was relax and not go out and 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 just burn myself out." At this point in the race, you can pass so many guys if you put your head down and find one yes. last final surge here that really makes a difference between your team coming in seventh or twelfth. So you got to go and you got to commit and you got to trust that the other four guys that are scoring for you are doing the same exact thing. And Northern Arizona, I mean, they scored 71 points. That wins this meet half the time, mm -hmm. maybe more. BYU looks like they're finishing in third place, 196 points, and Arkansas is rounding out the podium with 211. Yeah, as we watch those final guys come in, Arkansas pretty good with uh, uh, Kiprop and Diego. Ben Shear probably a little disappointing on what he thought they were going to get from him uh, as he came through. BYU, who just sort of always ends up on the podium, this time very quietly. James Corrigan, their top man, 32nd to score 32. Kenneth Rooks, Steeple Champ in in 35th. Creed Thompson's 46th. Then Joey Noakes at 50 seconds. Lucas Bond, 56th. Uh, Lucas Bonds in 63rd. They certainly suffered because Casey Klinger uh, took a redshirt year. Otherwise, that was their low guy, and they would probably have moved up uh, in terms of fewer points. But I don't know that they move up past Northern Arizona at 71 and Oklahoma State at 49. So three in a row for Northern Arizona. They won't match the Hogs from 1990 to 1993 by winning four in a row. And now you see some of the struggles. This is the, the what these guys, the effort that they give over the course of these 10Ks, just laying out. It is hot out here, John. It's definitely a tough finish as well. I do also want to just point out on the topic of Oklahoma State and Northern Arizona, it took 83 points last year. Northern Arizona just scored 71. The two guys that we said needed to come through, Santiago Prosser and Brody Hasty, once again did it, 21st and 25th. So they yeah. ran a great, great race, but Oklahoma State just did not miss. Every single one of their guys did exactly what they needed them to do. So we went to... Uh Five guys in the top 15 for Oklahoma State and five in the top 25 for NAU. We'll add up the final scores, make sure all the accounting is correct. And when we come back, we will talk with the champ, the undisputed champ, the first ever Ivy, Graham Blanks. Stay with us.